<laughs> you always talk about the ego as a protection. So my question is, when you wake up, what happens with the ego? The ego is fear. The ego stops you being your authentic self. Because you think there's something wrong. You have judgments with you and judgments with everyone else. When you wake up, that fear leaves and you're free to be yourself, but completely yourself, without judgment. So the judgment disappears internally and it also disappears externally because there's no longer a projection. I'm a mirror now. And that's the difference. Before I would project. Now I reflect. Because the fear's left. Casi perfecto, ¿no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sit down again. <laughs> so for me, I like to be my best. I like to look after my body. I like to feel great. I like to present myself well. I like the best of everything. All my life I was like that. That didn't change. But I'm not attached to it. Before, how I looked defined how I felt. If I didn't look great, and believe me, it was never good enough. It didn't matter what I did, it was never good enough. I'd suffer. Now, I just be the best of myself. And I think I'm great. Whereas before, any little whatever, I'd be judging. And I'm very grateful for what I'm, I have. And because of that gratitude, I take a lot of care. Uh, but it's not a bad image. It's love. You know, I'm me loving myself and being the best of me and giving the best of me, but without judgment and without suffering. Mm? Completely different story. Mm? Everything that you say about suffering seems to be that suffering is, is not good. <laughs> but I feel that suffering is it's a way to grow. It's a way to moving you to solve problems. Uh, if you don't have a lot of determination, if you don't really go for things, you want to grow, you want to be happy, you want, you want uh, make things happen. So I believe that suffering is really part of this goal. Suffering's a great teacher because you get sick of suffering. But once you start to become very conscious, in order to evolve, it's more a case of responsibility. Sure, we can confront a difficulty which makes us grow, but we don't have to suffer. I don't think there's anything wrong with suffering. My suffering made me who I am today. 
But I think you get to a point in your life where you don't need to suffer, where you make new choices, where you can evolve, be progressive, take on challenges, but without the anxiety. And that's called maturity and responsibility. Because there's a certain addiction that progressive people have to the anxiety of, oh, I've got it, like this. And that doesn't serve. That's attachment. So once you're conscious, I don't think you need to suffer anymore. Uno va por la vida, ¿verdad? Eh, en su carrera o lo que sea, o en política o lo que sea, va confiando en su integridad y logrando cosas. We go through life trusting yourself and achieving things. Mm. Pero llega un momento But right at the moment en el que la integridad no alcanza. Where your integrity is not enough. Donde por más que seas una persona well, limpia, even if you are a clean person, some que, little things que no se bien, que si no don't feel es, right. That if you don't do, you cannot be in the social system. Um, nah, algo sobre eso. I want to hear something. I'm a bit lost. In the business environment, sometimes you have to be out of integrity, like to do deals or... Sure, you have to pay people. No, so. <laughs> you know, you know. I know that this exists. You have to be clear. You have to be feel good with you. I'm not a moralist. I don't tell you how to run your life. But you have to be clear with you. What to what point you go until you feel out of integrity. And I know it's difficult in business. You're always having to pay someone. Yeah, and the governments are like little mafias. I know all of this. I know it's corrupt. But you have to be clear. Because you have to trust in you. You know, it gets to a point in life where there's more important things than money. And once people start to take that stance, stance, this nivel, the integrity, everything will start to change. You know, and you have to decide when you're going to do that. <coughs> and to trust that you'll create something better. Because, you know, business is changing all over the world. Everything's changing. The banks are changing. The governments are changing. You know, the computers are watching everything. You know, everything has to be integral. And this is where we're going. This is where we're going. But I know there's that problem. And in Paraguay? Sure. They're trying to clean it up, no? But you have to decide. I have a question. I connect in the exercise of consciousness when I go to the ocean, except that they I didn't ask for the chair. And I'm going out when you don't do the witnessing, I go and do it by myself, and I connect immediately. Not only I connect, but... I get very deep and I start moving a lot of things of what comes out in that moment. My question is, if I get to my country, I'm not going to have the ocean, or that if always I have to have the mud inside and the other one the ocean, 
I know that one thing and the facets and the other thing, but the two times I went connected with myself, I made beautiful work. You, you get to the point where you can connect in a micro bus. Mm. You know, you don't have to be at the beach or in nature. You start to connect everywhere. And this is important. You know, because this is a system for modern people with busy lives that have to take the peace into all environments. You know, we can't always run off to the camp or, or to the beach. We have to find it within the chaos. And this system is designed for that. Finding peace within a busy life. Hmm? So no, you don't have to move to the ocean. Where do you live? Bogota. Oh, yeah. Plenty of peace in Bogota, don't worry. <laughs> it hurts me that I lost my innocence I, and such a lack of trust. Can you tell? Well, you know, everyone loses their innocence. Because when we're children, we think we're perfect. In fact, we don't even think. We just be ourselves. And then someone tries to tell us that there's something wrong with us. We're too loud. Or too quiet, or too short, or too fat, or not intelligent enough, or not as good as the brother. And we start to create a personality, a character that we can present to the world. And this is what we do. And then we have to constantly watch ourselves. We're not spontaneous anymore. We think before we talk. We don't love openly. We start to shut down. We start to protect. We lose everything. We have an aspect of ourselves. Then we decide to find ourselves. To be real, take off our masks, connect with that love that was always there, give that love without thinking because the heart wants. We start to live in harmony with ourselves and then we have our innocence back. You know, one of the first things we're taught is to be innocent, is to be stupid. We're taught that. Oh, don't be innocent. Don't be stupid. Don't be naive. Don't give yourself away. It's horrible. We're taught exactly the opposite of who we are. Exactly the opposite. So yes, all adults use, lose their innocence. From about four onwards, we start to change. And instead of having the love here, the love's outside. So what do we do? It's a big balancing act. How do I hold the love? How do I control the love? What do I do? How do I behave? We change completely. Hmm? Now you can go back. 
it's not gone, it's just waiting. No, no se fue a ningún lugar, eh. Está esperando aquí dentro. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Continuing with this idea. Uh, uh, the shyness, the shyness has is related with that too, because sometimes we feel like shy about some people, some situations, and sometimes, how do you explain that? Of course, it's all image. Always worrying about what other people think. Disapproval is one of our biggest fears. Fear that people won't love us. Fear that people think we're stupid or inappropriate. We're always worrying about that. Children don't do that. They dance, they sing, they have fun, they unite, they're not classistas, they're not racistas, they're not anything. They're just the love, no? Open and loving. No image. You have to keep putting the image down. And confronting your fears. You know, lots of people are scared to talk in public. Lots of people are scared to dance in public. Or sing in public. Or anything in public. We have all these little phobias. And you have to challenge them. You have to push them. You have to liberate them. So you feel free just to be you. Mm, it's a process. You said in another moment that it was like a line of love. And in a place and where the rapists, the, the murderers, and the other side, the highest, the highest good. Something like this I understood. I don't know if I misunderstood or what happened with the line of love. It's not lines. What I'm talking about is vibrations. But every human needs to realize that we have every vibration within us. Okay, for example, if I said to you, would you kill someone? You'd say, no. But if someone was trying to kill your son, you'd kill someone. Sure. So, you know, we all have this capacity for extreme love and extreme violence. All humans have that. And when we encounter that internally and we embrace that, it gives us compassion because we can often see where things come from. And it's not that I condone them, but it's all an aspect of evolution. We have to elevate consciousness because the things we do for God or to protect the country, I mean, it's shocking what we do. We go in, we kill villages, we destroy for protection. We're racist, we're separatists, we're everything because we're superior. So there's all these different levels of violence. Some's justified. Oh, it's for Jesus. Oh, it's for uh, Mohammed. You know, it's just, they're all different levels. And we're all responsible. And the biggest problem with humanity is we think there's scarcity. We think we have to protect something. But it's not true. Everyone's perfect. 
Todo diferente. Todo diferente. They're all different. Todo diferente. Different belief systems. And yes, there's fanaticism. And where does it come from? Extreme stress. And the incapacity to know self. Because when you know yourself, you experience love. And when you experience love, you have compassion. When there's no love, you're projecting that all the time. That violence, that separation, that resentment. Everything's the source of something. But nothing's real. The only thing real is the love. 